So, you know, in 2022, earlier in the year, we were seeing silver and gold go down with asset prices overall as the dollar went higher. So, Gareth, uh, silver and gold have seen an interesting breakout this past month. Has precious metals sniffed out the Fed pivot? What's your thoughts? Yeah, so I, I do think that there's there's something to that. And I think the bigger thing is the dollar, right? So we've seen the DXY top out. And as soon as the DXY topped out, that's when gold and silver got this awesome bid. And so, you know, in 2022, earlier in the year, we were seeing silver and gold go down with asset prices overall as the dollar went higher. And I think one of the things to take out, take away from that is that even when the dollar was up 20%, Gold was only down about 7% on the year. In normal markets, you should see a inverse correlation, meaning it should be dollar up 20, gold down 20. So the fact that you only saw it down seven at its lowest point, to me, was a bullish indicator of big money buying in. And now we're starting to see the, the, uh, the basic compilation of that, where gold and silver are both making nice moves up. So, so I, I'm a big buyer of gold. Um, I think buy it on pullbacks right now. And I think, I think again, for me, it's shorting the S and P we've already seen a big collapse just over the last few trading days. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not necessarily endorsing chasing it at this point, wait for a bounce, but then look to short it. I, I really do think that the S and P 500 is going to really struggle in 2023. Mm -hmm. Now, Goldman Sachs, uh, they just, and many other banks, not just them, they came out, uh, this week and this past month and they're laying off not just a couple hundred people, Gareth, they're laying off thousands of people. And a lot of them are from the mortgage uh, sector. When you see that, what does that tell you? Is there like, a, is the recession already here? Yeah, I, I think the big thing is that there's this lagging kind of recession aspect where the jobs numbers, right? So you had these companies that were, it was so hard for them to find workers. You yeah. know, they had to try, you know, tried their best. They had to raise wages. And so now a lot of companies are very hesitant to lay off workers, but we're starting to see that change. We're starting to see these bigger firms, which have the ability to do more analysis on the labor market and future demand and recessions. They're starting to say, okay, listen, we are going to go into a recession here. We need to start laying off people. So I think this is a kind of a coming wave where you're seeing the big players like Goldman, Meta, you know, these bigger players, they mm -hmm. have the analysis and tools to see this coming. And I still remember everyone making fun of me when I was, you know, big <laughs> on gold at the end of 2022 or 2021, because, because everyone was like, oh, crypto is the place to be. And then it <laughs> yeah, turned out, right. you know, as we know, right, you know, gold was, is flattish on the year, give or take, while you have crypto down something like 50% or more. So, I mean, I think, I think this is kind of the beginning of the last bearish move in crypto where you're starting to scare out the retail crowd, right? So you had the retail crowd, the hodlers and all that. They've been kind of holding tough this whole move down. Now they're starting to get scared. You know, what's regulation mm -hmm. going to be? Which exchanges are going to go bust? All these type of things. And that's the dead indicator that we're getting closer to a bottom in the crypto market. So I actually do think there's a place in the future for Bitcoin. I think it's a digital gold type asset. Um, I'm not sure about the other cryptocurrencies, but I think, again, right. you still see more downside in Bitcoin, probably sub 10,000. But I do think it's a buying opportunity at that point. What's your uh, personal thoughts, Gareth, on the, on FTX and, and everything? Sam Bankman Freed, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Do you think he'll get any jail time or he'll walk? I, I do. I do. Right. I mean, politically, it's now the, the thing to do. Right. I mean, right. you know, once once enough retail investors get upset about something, then the politicians finally act, which is part of the issue with regulation too, is they'll finally start to regulate a little bit, which I actually think is needed. I mean, you don't want over-regulation, right. but you need regulation that creates transparency. Um, it's a horrendous situation. It's, it's just another black eye for cryptocurrency. But in, in a weird way, it's like, if you look back at past cycles, right? I mean, in various cycles, we've seen Enron, we've seen WorldCom, we've mm -hmm. seen Bernie Madoff, right? When you go into bad bear markets, there are bad players that get exposed. And it's usually kind of a way to, to make the, the sector stronger, if you will. So as bad as it is to go through, I actually think it's kind of a, a growing pain that's actually a longer term positive. Mm -hmm. is, there, uh, is there any similarities that you're seeing now, Gareth, uh, to the 1929 stock market crash? Or is there any yeah. similarities? No, I've, I've seen some weird and freakishly strange similarities. Um, you know, let me just show my chart here. I want to show yeah. you guys this because I think it's, it's really worth noting. So this is the chart of the S&P 500. And if I flip over to my weekly chart, we can clearly see that this was the dot-com bubble, mm -hmm. the collapse, 
the real estate bubble, the collapse, and then obviously Fed started stimulating right down here. And this is the resulting move, like this just humongous Jeez. move to the upside. And what I think is so fascinating when you look at charts, so let's go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and we'll flip over to the monthly, and we're going to go all the way back to the 1920s, right? And we're going to take a look at the similarities in charts here. And I think this has to be noted, right? So you had this same sort of move up, down, up, down, and then this monster run. And by the way, in the 20s, it was called the Roaring 20s. What we saw was lending standards really dropped. Everyone was just lending money. People were buying on margin. I mean, you saw it, it was almost identical to the same things you're seeing now. Wow. In addition, what's really kind of interesting is that in the in the teens, the 19 teens ish, you mm -hmm. saw the dawn of the car, which enabled people to go out and and really drive distances to go shopping to do different things. And you also saw the dawn of electricity where it became a common household thing to have electricity. And that also enabled people to do things at nighttime where they wouldn't normally be able to do it. So what it did was right. it really created this consumer spending bonanza. Well, if you go to the basic like the last 10, 15 years, even 20 years or, or more, you've seen the consumer. We had Amazon. Now you could shop from your home. You could sit in the comfort of your home and shop. And I think it's just so fascinating to kind of see how that's all played out. So, so it's very, very similar in that respect. And I think you, you can't, you know, you can't deny the similarities in that respect. So yeah, very, very interesting in that, in that way. Yeah, that was the really interesting similarities that you pointed out. Do you have, when you're purchasing gold, Gareth, are you purchasing like bars, coins? Are you purchasing like certain miners, producers? What do you go after? Yeah, so for me, you know, I, I always have a little bit of physical gold on hand and physical silver, right? It's I, I always view it as like, it's a good thing to have life insurance. It's a good mm -hmm. thing to have health insurance. If tomorrow we woke up and, and we had, you know, the banks were closed, the this internet was down, um, you know, your cash may be worthless. It's good to which have- is, Which is very that. possible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, inevitably, possible. there's going to be some sort of terroristic attack, right? I mean, on the grid, on things like that. So so I'm a big believer. It's not a whole lot. It's not like I hold millions of dollars in gold, I, I, in physical gold. I definitely don't. But it's enough where in that situation, it could get me and my family through. Um, and then for the rest of it, it's, it's more this type that I could be in and out of very quickly. We know mm -hmm. buying physical and then selling it again is not the easiest thing to do. So I'm a big fan of like, you have some for for safety and, and emergencies, and then the rest is in the form of the GLD, the GDX, which is the miners, you know, things like that.